Hmm, should I get the 1.2 kilowatt spindle kit for my Shapoko 5 Pro? Or should I get the 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled half-inch spindle kit for my Shapoko 5 Pro? Gee, I really don't know. What's the difference? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. I'm going to put both spindles to the test, and we're going to find out the difference between the two of them and see where the 65 millimeter fails and where the 80 millimeter or the 2.2 kilowatt spindle um, really exceeds and, and you know, takes off. It far exceeds the 65 millimeter. Um, so I'm going to point out those differences today and uh, you know, we'll get down to it and find out um, which one you need to buy if you're in the market to, to buy one of these spindles. But before we get started, I wanted to explain the format for the test. The test will consist of a series of straight line cuts that will vary in depth from an eighth of an inch all the way on up to a half inch deep. Um, and basically two speeds. I'm gonna be running about uh, 100 to 150 inches per minute all the way up to 200 inches per minute. And the reason I didn't go above 200 inches per minute is because I believe the Shea Poco is preset that it doesn't go above 200 inches per minute from the factory. Um, and that's fine. Um, so just to, to make up for it and to try to get one of these machines to go to failure, I'm going to gradually increase the depth um, to see if, it, if one of them fails and find out which one uh, exceeds. So for each test, I'll put the details up on the screen and I will first start each test with the 1.2 kilowatt spindle followed by the 2.2 kilowatt spindle. So they'll go back to back for the same cut so that you can see how each one, how each one fares in that cut. So with that, let's get to it. Okay, so this is just a post video to show that everything's still fine with the old spindle after it failed on, um, on the last test.
So I just figured I'd give you a close-up look of the test board that I ran. Uh, this one is for the 65 millimeter 1.2 kilowatt spindle. And uh, you know, I started out here is the, uh, the eighth inch pass um, and uh, at 200 inches per minute. Then I went to quarter inch deep on the second one at 200 inches per minute. Uh, Three eighths inch deep on the third one at 200 inches per minute. And then I went to half inch, uh, half inch deep, 150 inches per minute, and it was able to, you know, get through that one. But then when I uh, tried to step it up to 200 inches per minute at a half inch deep, uh, that's where the, the 65 millimeter spindle failed. And, um, you know, I stopped the machine before because it, it, um, it completely stalled. So I just wanted to, to let you guys see that close up um, you know what the uh, what the cut looked like and and uh, and how it went so now um, this board is the 80 millimeter spindle or the 2.2 kilowatt and I did the same test uh, initially where you know I ran um, the same quarter inch bit uh, eighth inch deep, same settings, 200 inches per minute, uh, quarter inch deep, 200 inches, three eighths inch deep at 200, half inch at 150, and then half inch deep at 200. And the machine had no problem going through it. There was um, a noticeable chatter from the bit um, that I can uh, point out. You can see it uh, at the 200 inch per minute. It, uh, it also had the same chatter um, where I went three, uh, three eighths inch deep at 200. It's, it's not as bad, but it had a little bit, but it got really noticeable, uh, at the half inch deep mark at, uh, 200 inches per minute. So then I decided to take it a notch further and go with uh, a half inch, uh, upcut end mill. And, uh, and I went, um, you know, I started out at a quarter inch deep at 150 inches per minute and plowed through it like butter. I mean, it had absolutely no problem. Um, I did the same thing, a uh, quarter inch deep, half inch, uh, you know, end mill at 200 inches per minute. And again, absolutely no problem, went right through it. And then went to three eighths inch deep at uh, 200 inches per minute, I jumped right away because I, I thought, you know, it had no problem with the prior uh, settings. So uh, I didn't think it would have an issue with 3 8 inch deep. And sure enough, it went right through it. Um, and then I went even further and went a half inch deep at 150 inches per minute. And again, it, it went through it with no problem. I'm sure it could go even more. I just, it's a brand new spindle and I don't want to, you know, really find out its limit. Uh, I didn't want to push it to failure. Uh, you know, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's a little bit of chatter on, um, on this last cut at half inch. It's just starting to show. And, you know, I would imagine it could easily handle 200 inches per minute. You'd probably get a lot of chatter from it. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, how much power, you know, torque you're getting from the 2.2 uh, kilowatt spindle. It's extremely powerful. So, um, I just thought that, you know, it'd be worthwhile to show that and, you know, see how it actually cut in the material. Again, this is not about cut quality. Uh, this is just to show the power difference between the two machines. Come on now, you didn't really think I was gonna stop right there. The fun was just getting started. So now what I plan on doing, we're gonna go a little further, um, is I'm gonna take this 3 8 inch 
two flute upcut end mill and uh, and we're gonna push it a little further we're gonna see what this bad boy can do um, did somebody out there mention uh, full depth of cut and three-quarter inch plywood hmm yeah let's see what happens problem on that one all right so here we have the board uh, right off the machine after we did after I did the cuts and um, just to make sure you guys know that's a full pass-through <laughs> I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not teasing you guys there or anything that's the real deal right there um, you know so we did uh, this first one is 100 inches per minute second one was 150 inches per minute the third one was 175 inches per minute, and the fourth one was 200 inches per minute. That's a full three quarter inch depth with a 3 8 inch upcut bit. Spinning at 22,000 RPM, um, and man, that spindle is a beast. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, it had no problem. I think can go. I think I can. You can still go more. I, I, you know, that's it for the machine. The machine doesn't go faster than 200. So, uh, you know. Uh, that spindle can certainly take it. Um, I am really, really impressed. And you know, uh, the cut quality isn't great. You know, this is an upcut bit. So it, I, unfortunately, it was all that I had. Um, I don't have a compression bit. Um, and I didn't want to use a down cut bit on a full depth of pass. They're pretty hard on the spindle, you know, because they don't evacuate the chips. They evacuate downward, so it makes it a little harder. Um, but, uh, you know, but again, uh, just you know, getting a little little look there, the, the cut's not that bad at all. Uh, believe it or not, I, I, I see more chatter on the, the 100 inches per minute than I do on, um, on the last one at 200. So uh, really interesting, you know, it, uh, it's pretty cool. And on this one, I, I used a ramp in, you know, it's, since it's such a deep cut, I, uh, I ramped in on it just to, uh, make it easier. I didn't do it on the other ones. I didn't think it was such a big deal. They were pretty shallow cuts. Um, and also, just in case you guys are wondering, on this test, I did all of these uh, conventional cut. And on the last test, I did them on the climb cut. So um, yeah, just another little tidbit there about it. All right. Okay, I hope that was good enough for you. Come on, I'm really, I'm not going to push a brand new spindle to failing point. You know, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, but I clearly think you can see from, uh, from this demonstration, the power that this, uh, this spindle has in it. Um, and yeah, maybe somebody out there might say, well, hey, you know, you could have sped up the 1.2 kilowatt a little more. You know, I was only turning 18,000 RPM. I don't know, maybe I could have gone to 22,000 and pushed it a little more, but I really don't think it would have done that much better. Um, and if anything, hey, you know, we leave a little something on the table there for uh, a future video or something like that, uh, you know, uh, where we can uh, explore a little further. But, uh, but I think you can clearly see the difference between these two spindles. 
All right, so now uh, let's talk about the results. Okay, so after all the testing's been done, um, you know, what's the takeaway from this, uh, from this video and the testing? Well, if you're in the market for, you know, a spindle for your Shapeoko 5 Pro, and you're not sure which one to get, uh, you know, you're deciding between the 65 millimeter or the 80 millimeter, um, aside from the obvious power difference between the two, because that's clearly the, um, the most notable factor between the two is that, um, I would say um, the, the pros for the, um, the 65 millimeter spindle, 1.2 kilowatt, is that if you only do really fine detailed work that um, you know, you're using slow speeds uh, and a very tight step over, you know, cause you want a really fine finish on the surface, um, and you're only using eighth inch or quarter inch bits, that's really all you ever get up to, Be, again, because of the work that you're doing, then you know, the 65 millimeter uh, spindle is gonna be just fine for you. Um, it, it, it took a lot you know, to get that machine to fail, uh, to, you know, in my opinion. Uh, you know, and, and so it, it's a great kit. It's just um, you know, you're limited to using quarter inch bits and you know certain speeds uh, that uh, the machine uh, is, is set to, and uh, you know I believe in, in in don't quote me on this, but I believe the shape Poco will only cut for right now. It's been set to 200 inches per minute. Um, I believe that's how they want it to for for safety reasons. So all of my tests were no higher than 200 inches per minute because the machine won't cut that fast. I've tried it. I set it to 400, 500 inches per minute, and no matter what, on my readout on carbide motion, the velocity on the chart it never went above 197, 198. Um, however, when the machine is moving, like, you know, if you're doing a rapid motion to move it to a different spot, um, you know, during uh, setup and stuff like that, yeah, I've gotten it as high as 266. I think it peaked once at 270, something like that. But in actual machining, the machine never went above 197, 198, something like that. Um, and again, for purposes of, you know, working with wood, um, anything above that, the cut quality is really going to start to go down. Uh, other than, you know, when I was cutting with the half inch bit on the, uh, the 80 millimeter 2.2 kilowatt spindle, that one, and it was a fresher bit, you know, cause I didn't put it through the stresses of all the other cuts, but it, it cut pretty clean. Um, but again, the faster you go, you start to sacrifice cut quality. And in wood, that you know, will become a factor. So uh, now moving on to the benefits of getting the 80 millimeter spindle, which is water-cooled, and uh, obviously it's a lot more power. Um, so you're gonna be able to do things a lot faster if, um, you know, let's say, you know, cut quality isn't of the utmost importance, you just wanna, you know, cut something quicker, that one will clearly be able to do it because you can either increase your depth of cut and, and, you know, rather than making 12 passes on a part, you know, to get through it, you could easily do it in six, maybe even less than that. So, you know, you go from, I don't know, a project that could take 30 minutes to cut it now you can cut it down to you know 15 minutes or even less. Again, depending on how uh, how hard you push that machine, which it certainly will be able to take it and handle it. Um, so that's one thing is 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 a time saving. The other thing is that you have the addition now with the ER20 collet and going up to a half inch bits. You have a whole new range of bits that are going to be available to you, and you can do a lot more with that, um, you know, versus just being limited to the the quarter inch bits. So, uh, so that's a big plus. Um, I, I know myself that uh, you know when when you're uh, dishing out a bowl or a tray or something like that, you can certainly uh, get it done a lot quicker than than you would with with just a quarter inch bit. 
Now that's to say, you know, if the same thing will apply with, with this um, uh, 2.2 kilowatt as this, the 1.2 kilowatt is that if utmost cut quality is what you're concerned about, you know, and you want a surface finish that's, you know, like glass that you barely have to do any sanding to, well then, you know, the, the, the same rules are going to apply. You're going to have to slow down your feed rate and your step over is going to have to be, you know, very fine. So it, it's going to be the same way uh, as the 65 millimeter. But again, you're going to be um, absolutely impressed with the power the speed at which you can cut things, you know, and, you, and your projects will be cut in, in half. And then on top of all that, you, you have the benefit of a water-cooled uh, spindle. So you don't have to worry about, you know, it overheating, uh, you know, anything like that. And um, it, it, it's also extremely quiet uh, as compared to even the 65 millimeter. I found that it was, to me, just the spindle alone was much quieter. So that, that alone will, will help you out. So the only drawbacks to using um, or, or getting the 2.2 kilowatt spindle kit is that um, power requirements. So it runs on 220 volt and you know, if you don't have a 220 volt outlet for the machine, you know, you're, you're gonna either have to have an electrician install it or you know it can be a little more cumbersome than just the um, you know easy plug-in of the 65 millimeter kit where um, you know it just runs on 110 volt and you know it's pretty simple so this has a little extra uh, you know of a, of a power uh, consumption there but uh, but again it's well worth the the trade-off you know it's a it's a really powerful uh, spindle and um, I don't know, maybe to some others, the, you know, the addition of the cooling unit, um, which runs on 110 volt could also be, uh, maybe, you know, it's an additional machine that you have to find space for, you know, and, um, and, and run it as well, uh, plugged in. So, uh, so maybe to someone that could be a drawback, but to me, it's, it's a plus. I, I just think that, uh, you know, it's a great setup and, um, it's more, uh, heavy duty, very professional, and uh, you know you, the results will show. You can really get it, get you know, your work done. To me, you know, I found that like the difference between the two machines is where the the 1.2 kilowatt is still kind of a hobbyist uh, kind of uh, spindle, uh, unless, like I said, you're doing really fine, intricate work. Then that's a whole separate thing. Um, but when you step up to the 2.2 kilowatt, 80 millimeter spindle, you're really in more of a heavy duty professional uh, tool there. It, 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 it's hard to push that machine. I mean, again, it's brand new. I didn't want to push it to its limits, but uh, I, I didn't, I don't think I got close to them. You know, let's put it that way. So uh, I'm really impressed um, with it. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, and uh, if you guys like my content, please uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. And until then, I'll see you guys on the next one.